Right, this is Banks. Long Banks, he finds a oh. seam down the sideline. Skips past 10, five, touchdown, second one wow. of the night for Long Banks, 50 yards. 50 See yards. See you later. Wow, just like that. Up the floor, intercepted there by Kingma. Down to Todd, to Zare for the two-handed flush. Count the basket for Brian Zare. Hansen with a strike right at keeper. Here's the rebound again. Another great save. Still in favor with two bang bang saves at point blank range. Paul, can she control it? Gets beyond Tearsley. It's in the back of the net. Great drop. Here's it out. Puts some zip on this thing. That is a honey, and that is a catch. And that is a touchdown. Got it, fakes the handoff, now rolls to the right, still rolling, still being cha chased, now heads up field, goes around a man at the 40, down to the 35, heads in field at the 30, now he's down to the 20, you gotta be kidding me, he's down to the 15, almost down, he's to the 10 yard line. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we welcome you inside Snohomish Veterans Memorial Stadium for homecoming night for the Snohomish Panthers here on STSPN. We are presented, of course, by Les Schwab Tires. Solid crowd here welcoming back folks from classes gone by recent and uh we'll say a little more experience a little farther in the past but amp harrell here with you alongside ron henthorne the coach todd elvig on the ones and twos if you will and this is a big time matchup the shorewood storm rays invading veterans memorial stadium on homecoming night and it's shorewood shortcrest and snohomish three teams vying for one playoff spot ronnie yeah should be a good uh, good yes, football sir. game here tonight uh the loser is probably not going to make it into the crossover playoffs, so this means a lot to both of these teams tonight. And they both come in here with not what you'd call a winning record, with uh, Snohomish <laughs> one and six, one and three in conference, and of course Sherwood two and four, one and three in conference. So uh, it's going to be a battle out there on, on the fields, and 
down there talking to the coaches earlier tonight. Why uh, they're they're looking for looking for blood out there. I think <laughs> they want to win this ball game. So. Yeah, it's a must-win situation. Shorewood plays Shorecrest uh, next week in the regular season finale, while Snohomish travels to Monroe, unbeaten and pretty much projected to be the number one team in the South. Yeah, of 3A. Take quite a bit for Snohomish to get by Monroe the way they've been playing all year. But, you know, it's high school and it's football and anything can happen. Somebody can get hurt and make a big difference in a ball game. And I hope that doesn't happen. But you never know until they play it. But just like Snohomish right now, uh, their starting quarterback, uh, David Hammer, uh, somewhat related to the coach, Joey Hammer, <laughs> has been out for a couple of games and he's back tonight. And Joey said, You're going to see Snohomish football tonight and we're going to see Joey. Under center, I believe, for probably a lot of the game tonight. And probably he throws a pretty good long ball. I wouldn't be surprised to see them try that a couple of times. I don't know if you'll see Joey under center, but you will see David. Or David. Wrong, wrong hammer. <laughs> Sorry, pardon me. <laughs> no worries. Had to catch on that one, bud. I made my, I made the first mistake of the night. Hey, yeah, the first one's free. <laughs> first uh, one's free. You're so, next. <laughs> yep, indeed. Snohomish won the toss and declined. So the Shorewood Storm Rays will receive this opening kickoff in the white tops. Dark pants and dark helmets traveling left to right as you view. I normally want to say as you listen, but I'm doing more TV than radio these days, partner. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, so got a got a lot of injuries for both sides as well. So I'm going to see how that plays into things with these two teams just hungry for a win. Yeah, uh, Sherwood quarterback, starting quarterback is out. Didn't finally out. He tried to play him last week and didn't work out for him. So it's a they get the kickoff there. He's got a pretty good run back going. He's going to make Finnegan, the corner. Finnegan Backler finally chased out of bounds by Bridger Ulrich. And we are set to go here for the Shorewood Storm Rays. Quarterback, you mentioned their quarterback, Tyler Giles, out this week. So they'll go with Gatsby Palmer under center. And skill position players include Reed Petchel, Christian Sticklemeyer, Nico Zacharias, Charlie Fry, and Masa Tara. So look for Sherwood to run the ball a lot. They've got some big guys up front on the line down there, the two, three hundred pound guys down there that uh, can move some bodies. Under center with wing backs. Don't see that very often at this level. Sort of stumbles around and just scoots it forward with uh, Nico Zacharias on that end around. Give him at least six or Nico seven. Nico Zacharias with Zacharias. That one probably here. It's a slow developing play. Starting lineup for the Snohomish defense here. Up front, it's Brownfield and Lewis, the tackles. The nose is Jensen as they play a 3-5-3. In the middle, Mike linebacker is Bedard. Sam and Will, respectively, Willis and Tautolo will get the rest after this. Motion in the backfield. Snapping to give to the first man through. No, it was actually a pretty solid fake as... Thank you, Bob. Yeah, 205 pound Gatsby Palmer will crash forward and pick up that first down. The Viper and Panther in this defense as they go with that 3 5 3. Hernandez, the Viper, LaRue, the Panther, and your corners, Mason and Ariola. Strong safety is over. That's your Snohomish starting lineup on homecoming, and you got to get the win on homecoming, but just as importantly, you got to get the win to try and control your playoff destiny. Just have to do that. Motion to the backfield, Sticklemeyer. A little misdirection, Sticklemeyer. Nope, excuse me, that's uh, Zacharias winds up with it, and he will get a good push up that right hash mark and pick up another first down, Cowboy. Yep, so far, Sherwood working the game plan. They said they were going to work. They to run the ball and uh, move down the field. They run more than they pass. Zacharias, so probably going to be surprised if you see them pass. A lot of misdirection, kind of a wing T type of look here. Haven't seen this in high school in quite a while. They'll split Charlie Fry out to the side. I, I don't think that's that Charlie Fry, by the way. Single coverage to the far side. Motion to the backfield. They'll go to an eye now. And then they'll check out of it. Interesting. Wing to either side. Oh, man. Go on the option. And ducks his head and gets about five. It's that beaten and banging quarterback, Gatsby Palmer. He definitely got five, maybe a six. You know, I like this look from Shorewood early on. They they hide the eggs, but they block it well. Yep. They got a little little uh, trickery in there in the handoff. Brighton fall up front along with Logan Jovich. 
Losing some big bodies on that offensive line, though. Broward keeps moving the ball like they're doing it, where the uh, Panthers are going to have a little trouble holding them down for more than a few yards each time. Showing blitz, creeping up, picked up well, and there's the runoff left tackle, and he'll pick up the first down pretty easily there. Definitely good. That's uh, Nico Zacharias, wide receiver, playing more of a running back. Looks the fake here. He looks like first for the story. wrong guy got a tackle there because he didn't have the ball. The fake must have worked pretty good. A good tackle by Lucas Bosa to clean that up and keep it from going for more. Bosa, two-way player, defensive lineman, but he also plays a pretty good tight end as well. Broward moving the ball four or five yards every time they ever played so far, and they're done on the 24 right now. Snap to give to the fullback, and he will beat and bang. Another good five yards. Reed Peschel. Reed Peschel, Gary. Six foot, 215, and a senior. He just goes right into the meat Brought of that defense. 75. Aiden Ceceris, 6'3, 305. And a Cheeto. <laughs> a good sized boy. I would not want to block him, but then again, Jaden Freudenthal. 6-1-3-25. Like 10 against 10 because the wide receiver out there isn't doing anything. He's keeping the player out of the game. Yeah, it's just knitting a sweater. Option run off oh. left side. Penalty marker down. Talk about lines on the left side over there. It looks like it might be on the play. I got to say, on, on homecoming night, the Snohomish red and white Good look ball. is sharp. Looks like the holding is uh, Kerwood's first flag of the night here. 8.15 left to go on his first period. Okay, I just saw it. <laughs> that was that was pretty academic. I'm not naming names or numbers, but, uh, yeah, I'm not going to argue with that one too much. Yeah. Big boy got an advantage and uh, used leverage. Just pinned somebody in in the interior of that defensive line. 3-5-3 three, three look. We used to go with... Uh, Maybe a 33 or, or something, you know, 44 or something like that. Have a have a bandit or a rover. This look has two of them. Yep. Remember many a D1 discussions on coaches' shows saying, "Why don't we go to bandit or rover, uh, robber, and and spy on the quarterback?" Well, you got to have the personnel and you got to have the game plan, and that's not something that a lot of folks did 20 years ago. So Joey Hammer on the. Down there trying to get the crowd behind him. We need some help down there stopping these guys from running. To your earlier point, Charlie Fry, the loneliest man in the world right now on the far boundary. Straight drop. Looks like a sprint pass. They're going to, no, they're going underneath, actually. Big catch and to the end zone. Touchdown. Shorewood, Storm Rays. Nico Zacharias with the little pitch and catch on a second and 13 after the penalty. 27 yards to pay dirt. Well, just like that. They run, 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 and then when you don't think they're going to do anything, they throw the ball, and there you go. Yeah, they threw it underneath. It was That was a lollipop, but right, still, 27-yard touchdown through the air after they got everything done on the ground. Shorewood, a tough one to handle here. Sticklemeyer holding the ball down there. Let's we'll see what happens if he can get it up in position. Now they'll flip the ends. Again, more more window dressing. And that one is Check clubbed no. up and good. Oh, just, that make it just barely wiggled its way through. New score, seven to nothing. Shorewood over Snohomish. Panthers to get the ball when we return on STSBN. Thanks to Les Schwab tires. I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. And back here on STSPN, 747, as my partner pointed out, going to break. Boeing time. There you go, yeah. So just uh, according to the plan there, uh, go through up uh, Thank you very much. Fairwood says we're going to run the ball a lot, and he did come through one pass and made the score. So only one possession today, and that Sherwood had the ball, ran their, ran their plan. Let's see if uh, the Panthers can run that plan. So they'll get the ball here with 47 left to go in this period. We'll see what, the, what they got in store. 
Live and direct from Veterans Memorial Stadium, teeing it up is Isaac Medhog. And he will approach total leather. Nice kick back to the 11-yard line. And away goes 13 in red. Ryan Stepp gets around the edge. One man to beat. And he gets around the edge, but the defense gets to him in that process. Penalty marker down. Landon Dunphy on a stop for the Storm Rings. 40-yard run. I think he's going to come back. Probably got a block in the back. And that's what it looks like to me as well. Yep. As we sort this out, let's meet the starting offense for the Snohomish Panthers. Up front, left to right, Powers, Abood, Marshall over the football. Farrell and Lewis, your quarterback, back this week, David Hammer. Fullback is Bennett. The receivers include Bosa, Stepp, uh, Bedard, and Brown. Bedard, the H-back. And that, that penalty is down there on about the 30-yard line. Ooh. The ball cleared back for the 20. That is going to hurt. 21-yard line. David Hammer will trot out. I've been able to see him in all three of the home games now for the Snohomish Panthers. Yeah, that's that's tough. Three home games all season. Let's see David under center. Let's see if we do and we do so far. Under center with uh, a convoy off to the right. And now they'll flip everybody. Motion to the backfield. Anything you can do, I can do better. But uh, that one tripped up Bennett. Gets a gain of about two. No, uh, he he fell for two. <laughs> yeah, he got he literally got tripped up up front. Here you go, uh, Big dude, uh, Christopher Hubler. Got the stop. Six, five nine two fifty. Shorewood with it looks like a three man front. Nose guard is 76, Anthony Reyes, 6'3", 340. Might be, might be three men up there, but looks like four from here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> taking on one, and it's like taking on two. You 340 at the nose, that is uh, that is not small. They're going to run right by. Look at yeah, that. run right through. Tackle made by Landon Dunphy, but a big, big run for Cole Bedard. Watch this replay here fullback on just a straight dive and an excellent block. I didn't catch that as he as he ran through. It looked like 53 maybe? Just got, just got between the two big guys. Oh, it? it was it was a boot. Seth a boot with a pancake block. Yeah. And now they'll rush over the football. First and 10 for the Panthers down 7 to nothing. Clock runs here in the first. 2 by 2, then they'll switch again. Offset eye to the left. Rocket motion. Second man through gets it. Good on the eight yards on that one. That is Bennett. Excellent work there. I like this look. They faked the toss and then gave to the second man through on a blast. Yeah, the big guys are standing up for sure with down there. And once they stand up, the little guys are kind of ducks under them there. And they can't grab them. What's the old coaching adage? Low man wins. Did that time. Sure. Second down three after the gain of seven. Offset eye to the left. Motion again. Give to the first man through, and he is stood up and thrown down after a short game. Third down and about three. Third down and third down and brings up about a two yards, we'll say. A couple yards, yeah. This is just kind of punch, punch, counter punch. Nobody really showing any strengths or weaknesses thus far. Somers is running the ball well on third down. Normally you might expect a pass on play like this, but uh, the way they've been busting through the other right side of the line, I, I think they might try that again. Plus, it's it's at the 48-yard line, so this is definitely four-down territory. Could be for them, yeah. Not just great they'll, they'll just go and keep it under center. David Hammer, and he will hammer his way ahead for the first down. Tackle made by Gatsby Palmer. First down, Panthers. Just, just gooses the uh, center on the tail, and away he goes. You guys don't help from anybody else either. That was all him. He charged him straight ahead. Seven or nothing, but first possession for the Snohomish Panthers. Broadcast, of course, brought to you by Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing here in our community. First and ten, Cats. 
looks like one by one. Blitz coming. Boot roll, pumps, then airs this one out. Has a man over the top, and it bounces off the hand. Oddly not hands that one. Ronan Brown, defense was there in the form of Reed Petchel. I don't know if he got a paw in there or not, but camera work. No, nope, that was... He didn't get it. That wasn't Reed Petchel. It was Christian Sticklemeyer. They got an 11, a 12, and a 13 out there, so... Yeah, and they all all play similar positions and all kind of cloud the same way. <laughs> you see 11 Petrol there playing as a linebacker. So they took their shot. They had their opportunity. Maybe that kind of draws people out of the box. Maybe we'll get rid of 11 and call them two streets. Right? <laughs> How about that? Yeah. 423 to go. Opening frame, 7 0 Storm Rays. Back to the running game here. Back to the ground. Oh, nose guard said, I will have my extra dinner now. Anthony Reyes, okay. nom, nom, nom. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you try and shed past those guys. You notice he, he yeah. got low right there. He got low yeah. and wrapped up. Reyes was totally 340 pounds. You don't want to let anyone near him. Nope. No rub block. In fact, he had help in uh, Masatara kind of just grabbing on to cloth. Back to that third down again here. Uh, this time I expect to see them throw the ball. I don't think they're going to throw it long all over. <laughs> David can certainly do that. This is this is Bosa territory right here. This has Bosa all over it. Okay. Tight end to the right. He is in tight. Motion to the backfield. And they will give on the dive play. Low man wins as well. That's Masa Tara. He does get through, but they blew it dead. And that will bring up fourth down. Well, like you said, this is probably four down there. So yep. They're staying on to the 45 yard line. Plus 45. He's a little game there. Got about two or three. I think, uh, I think this is going to be a pass play. Pass play, or, or you could even quick kick here. Because uh, I believe David is the punter, isn't he? Uh, oh, wait, we have the, the chart right here. Yeah. Cortez is the punter. Excuse me. Yeah, they, we'll see what they come out with here, but, you know, I I think they're going to pass it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't, because they've been running pretty good. They might, I don't know, make it happen here. Fourth and a long six. Yep. Snap and a play fake. Stops. Launches. Catch. There's Bosa. There's the first down. Oh. Mr. Sticks with the grab. Whoa. Oh. Did what you expected him to do, and he was wide open. I expected it one play earlier, but uh, yeah, that worked. I, I am a disciple of the tight end. <laughs> Huge fan of uh, former Maryland Terrapins star Frank Wycheck. Oh yeah. Former Washington football team standout as well. Back in, that would be David Hammer. A lot of hammers around this program. Two by two again. Single setback. Now they'll motion everyone again into an eye. And it is old school football on homecoming night. A wing T versus a motion eye. Boot roll. Looks. Uncorks a beautiful one. And that'll be a penalty. And you know what? I don't hate it. That's one of those. You're beat. And what's the worst that happened? You give up 15. He's got to turn around. If he had turned around, he probably would have been fine because I don't think he would have called for otherwise. Man, that was a pretty ball from David Hammer, but they're going to get the uh, fresh set of downs anyway. Yep. Again, smart play. And if you're if you're out there throwing things at your streaming device, if you're beat in this level, it's it's not going to be a spot foul. It's not going to hurt you as much as a touch. Yeah. I thought it was 15, but uh, you're probably right. Well, I should have looked where they moved it. I forgot. So out to the 23, it appears. 22. First and 10, Panthers. Single back right now is Bennett. Motion both end of the slot left. Athens looking to widen things out here. And no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
They're just making that uh, interior five run all over the place. Toss coming around near side. Needs a block. Got a block. And he will get to about the 13. A lot of running for five yards, but we'll take it. By the way, this is still the second possession of the ball game, and we're 90 seconds left in the first quarter. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen a quarter with the uh, each team having the ball once, and I don't think that they're going to think uh, Burr would get the ball again in this quarter. I'm sure that Snohomish would be just fine with that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, minute, minute here, plus to go, and the clock's running, and I think Snohomish would like to score here in this quarter, but uh, they don't seem to be in any hurry to make it happen. No, you're, you're running clock and running the ball, running it effectively. High backfield. Bedard is the fullback. Tailback is Bennett. He will walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers. Oh, Bedard. Bedard just walked his way right on in, a little high step, and away we go. And it's 7 6, extra point bending. As we light things up here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. The, the folks in the truck are working overtime today. Yeah, 59 went down there and got him some, too. Powers with the lead block, and Farrell finished it up. Kick is up, and looks good, feels good. So a 13-yard run. By Cole Bedard, and we have a high ball game. Back after this with the final 47 seconds of the first quarter on STSBS. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. Back here on STSPN, homecoming night for Snohomish, Panthers, Answer back, and we're about to have our third, our third possession of the game, with 47 seconds left in the first quarter. Here's a quick update on the Monroe and the Woodway score. Monroe is up 14 nothing right now. Kind of exactly as it was expected. Seven all as this one teed up and ready, and away we go for the third possession. Bang down to about the 13. Penalty marker flies, so this one's coming back. Ball came out. Ball came out. They're saying it was uh, already down. Yeah, a good 30, 35 yard return on board fire. going to come back a ways. Finnegan Beckler on the run back. Not sure but where he called the funnel on. Well, we'll see the official call if it was a hole, if it was a block in the back. It is, in fact, a block in the back. We'll see where they put it. I want to tell folks about some of the other games in progress. You mentioned Monroe and Edmonds Woodway. Uh, if Monroe gets that win, they're pretty much in the driver's seat of that number one spot in the uh, South Division, uh, 3A. Yep. Then uh, Mount Lake Terrace is taking on Inglewood. Uh, Edmonds Woodway, you already mentioned. And uh, then this matchup here, Snohomish Shorewood. Shorecrest is hosting Linville. From the 32. Last few plays of this opening quarter. Snap and a give. Fullback just leaning forward, and he'll take what he can get, and then the entire line shoves him backwards. He got at least four. William Hernandez on the stop. Look like you're going to give him all, give him five. Petrol on the carry, and we may not have another play here. I think not. 13 seconds, and the clock continues to bleed. Four seconds. We'll have uh, more schedule and 
notes to get to right after this, but at the end of one, it's seven all. It's now Homish and Shorewood here on STSBN. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Back here on STSPN, second quarter action about to get underway. Snohomish and Shorewood nodded at seven. Other schedule and score notes. If you're uh, wondering about the KRKO game, uh, Everett High playing host to the Cedar Crest Red Wolves tonight. Tom Lafferty on the call, as always, on 1380, 95.3, and KRKO.com. We're about to get started there. We've got a little time on for something. I'm not sure what it is, but you know, first quarter, uh, sure we had the ball once. Snowmish had the ball once. It's yep. the second quarter. You think it's going to happen again? <laughs> I don't think so. I think we'll maybe have three full possessions this this quarter. I'm going to get greedy. You're going to bet against that happening in the second quarter. I, I oh. think it's a good bet. Got a little equipment issue as heading out is Ben Jenkins. So checking in. Is Anthony Reyes, the nose, now having to play on offense, and he'll oh he'll play center. Okay. Let's see if that affects anything here with this misdirection wing T offense having a new cold center. Well, he's a big center. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes. If his job is give ball, hit people, mission accomplished. And he did yep. that. Oh, he did exactly that. that. And uh oh, this uh, is trouble. Bye bye. Yep. That's Zacharias, I believe. Zacarius. Yes. Oh, Nico three. Zacarius. All the way. I think he scored with four Uh yes, he caught the pass earlier. Yep. And Zacharias gets a good mash and outruns the entire team. Well, there goes the odds against uh Against two possessions? Two possessions in the quarter. <laughs> because with 11.49 left to go, I don't think uh, it's always been to keep it that long. <laughs> so that play started at the 37, I believe. So that would be 23, so 73-yard run. Yeah. Good, good run. Yeah. Excellent run, and he paid off most of it. Kick is up, and good off the toe of... Uh, I, or Kare Nye, new score, 14 to 7 storm rates. Back after this on STSBN. Yeah, but he, 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 he took two guys out with that block. <laughs> He's a big dude. Back to it on STSPN, presented by Les Schwab Tires. And Harold, Ron Hemthorne, Todd Elvig to my right. Sarah Elvig, the uh, assistant producer. And, of course, all the folks in the truck making sure we're running at high efficiency, 60 frames per second tonight. Just stunning. Yeah, a little in between hop. And exiting out to the right. That is Taylor Areola. 
14 to 7 storm rays and the alumni are checking in here on homecoming night so after that squib kick david hammer will bring in the play colin oh hollow so from the eye backfield Hammer under the center. Four-man front for the Rays. Toss. New running back in there. And he gets a downfield block, and away he goes. Big game out across the 40-yard line for Mason Surdy. First time of seeing Mason Surdy in action. So, hey, punch, punch, counterpunch. Yeah. What happened when I was gone? I was Just talking to a nice yeah. lady came in here. With, uh, alumni from uh, Snohomish Sheriff, 1973, Sherry Holland. If anybody knows Sherry Holland, who's now known by the name Sherry Alford. Huh? Althoffs. Oh, glad I, to, I pronounced her name correctly. Sorry if I didn't. But <laughs> glad to have her uh, checking into the booth. Sherry but, likes, likes to let people know she's here. So somebody came from homecoming. Big run for... Uh, Surdy, Mason Surdy. And now he'll go in motion and they'll go with a dive instead. And a rugby scrum for a gain of about, we'll call it five. Tackle made by Predrog Anderson, or Andreessen, excuse me. Scores coming in hot and heavy. In the north side of Wesco 3A, Arlington is at Oak Harbor. Marysville Pilchuck hosting Glacier Peak. Ferndale hosting Mount Vernon. Stanwood hosting Marysville Getchell. So we'll get to some potential matchups and things like that as we go throughout the night. A couple of big runs. Always moving the ball on the ground again. Looks like plan was. Look at hammer under center. I'm probably going to run the whole game that way. It looks like it's working. And again, that oh, and probably results in a false starter. Are they saying a timeout on the field. Signaling timeout. Okay. I'm not sure who called it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, was, that, yeah, that was that was a procedure penalty. <laughs> Got to be careful when you're doing these tricky formations and switches and what what not. Curious what happened with the uh, the substitutions because if it was one play, that's one thing. But having Surdy in there replacing the step, he's the guy that goes in motion in that rocket motion. So it works, but I'm just kind of curious what happened to Step. Second and ten. So back where they started from at the 40. Homecoming night for the Panthers. Straight eye. That give first man through. Not a whole lot there. Looks like Andreessen got in and blew that play up. They got nine minutes and 40 seconds just now to hold on to the ball for three quarters. <laughs> Make it really exciting for us. There you go. Just just hold it down to the stretch. I think the odds are not in favor of that. Nope. Salem Mitchell in there on the uh, right end spot for the Storm Rays. First time seeing him as we go a little deeper on the depth chart here in the second quarter of play. 14 to 7. Three possessions total. Actually, this is the fourth possession, but every possession has ended with a touchdown. You're right. And look for David to drop back on this one, third and many, seven, eight yards. He'll probably go for the goal. And now, changing things up once again. Well, I've got to have a player check out. That would be Silas Green. So would that put pull Bedard back in? Now we've had some equipment issues for both sides. Bedard will check back in. I have to tell Bedard what the play is. Bosa lined up as the tight end to your right. Well, to the right. He's number 82. He'll line down now. Watch for him in this situation. Motion to backfield. Penalty markers. I'll start, I think, on the left side of the line. So that time they didn't have to do any trickeration. Nobody went in motion, but I think somebody may have thought they were supposed to. Now you're at third and... Third and about 15. Yeah, 13. Wrong direction. This time for sure, I think you're going to see it fast. Now, what do you do here? Do you go cover two? Do you go with a shell? Do you blitz your storm the storm rays? Storm rays. I, I think Stormy needs to blitz big time right now because David's going to drop back. That means 
That's what I do if I was out there. Center linebacker and he's swinging across the guard. Third down and call it 13. Just like Tight splits here. Under center. Play fake. Good pocket. Fires that one into traffic. Intended for Brown, and that time I think you were you were spot on. He got his head around and played the ball and the receiver. Yep. A little unnecessary on the tackle there because the <laughs> ball was wide, but I like the little little tuck on the on the play fake and the boot roll. But incomplete. No penalty and here we go. Oh, did they just call something? I think they, they called the flag on it, I thought. I thought. Oh, okay. Let's, let's watch the replay and let's see Amp uh, actually get the call right this time. And, oh, okay. Yeah, there goes the... Yeah, I did, I did see it on the back end of that play, so... Yeah. So now it'll bring up... Third and three. Third down and about three, yeah. Three. Interesting. I guess that was the unnecessary playing through the body, Coach. Uh, I don't think I wouldn't have called it pass interference. I <laughs> tackled him way after the ball was gone, you know. So I don't know. He was there. Don't blame the referee. He's out there doing a good job. Yeah, I'm not. Toss yeah. left side, and Surdy will fight for the sticks. I don't know. I don't think he made it. But that's gonna be close. The camera Surdy angle fight. makes it look a little closer than than my real time view made it look. Let's let's just see though. Yeah, they gave it. To okay, him. they gave it to him. Surdy, it's been a good spark here. On this slow motion, there's the rocket toss, and good job getting out there and getting some. Love the downfield block. Boy, he's right on the line. I guess. The more we saw it on replay there, I'd say you, he earned it. <laughs> yeah. Zaya Nelson springs that one. Hang a gold star on that. He's fighting for the uh, lineman of the game. Playing for the shirt and putting in the work. 14-7. Panthers trail here. But it's only their third possession. Second possession, or right? Second possession, yeah. yeah. Oh, inside. oh, lost it. Got it back. That's called the forward fumble for a couple of yards. And we good, had to push down too. good work by Cole Bedard as he hung on to it. Let's see if he just lost his grip or if somebody got in there. Oh, somebody got in there. Yeah. That was an excellent play by Landon Dunphy. We've called his name a lot. Now an uh, injured player down for Shorewood. Unfortunate there for uh, Shorewood that they didn't cover that fumble. Luckily for the Panthers, they did. So. And good hustle by Bedard to hop on. We'll step aside for a break. We'll be back with more after this on STSB. Nope, nope, never mind. Oh! Wanted, to, wanted to give plenty of uh, of time for the uh, injured player to get the treatment he needed, but Andreessen pops up, and so we'll keep it right here. 7.25 to go. And he did not want us to, uh, to pay the bills. No. Well... So far, so was just slowly eating his clock up on this quarter. Yeah, hey. <laughs> so on a first down and 10, David Hammer will bring the play in. And that's a lot of beef up front for the Storm Race. And so far, they've been able to move the ball on the ground. Even three or four yards or five yards, six yards, it makes a difference. You know, doesn't take much. Marshall over the football, snap and some misdirection. That was a uh, that was a blown play. I think you're right. Yeah, I think uh, he never turned around. There was no way to hand it to. Yeah, just watch the replay here. He 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 looks for help and uh, turn out the lights. The party's over. Well, we'll just keep it right here. 7:08 to go in the first half. And so we'll get to some scores here in a bit. Any updates from Monroe? Really. Monroe and Edmonds Woodway trying to lock up the number one seed up there. 21 nothing last score I got on Monroe. Fair enough. Monroe 4 and 0 in league, and heavy favorites to go 6 and 0. Bosa will line in. Motion to the backfield. Surdy. No fake to give to him and give right up the middle. Tripped up at the five-yard line. Good enough for a first down, though. Absolutely. Good carry by 31. That's uh, Nelson. 
Terrius on the stop, but first and goal for the Panthers here with 6.20 in the clock runs. Like I said, they're running the ball well. They just keep running it. They don't need to throw it as long as they run the ball that well. Yeah. And then every once in a while, you're going to surprise them and throw that ball when they don't think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Timeout, Storm Rays. We will step aside for a break as well. For real this time in the truck. 14-7, Panthers trail on STSPN. Take part. We're here to take over. I am the beast. Homecoming night. That's the Homish High as the Panthers looking to tie this thing up again. They have milked a lot of the clock in this game with running plays for both sides. Definitely have with six minutes left to go in this second period here. And uh, so always needs to score to maintain the consistency of scoring with every possession. So so far, three for three in this game. And it's first and goal to go from the five. Unless they come to that uh, unusual fumble, which did happen only they recovered it. This time, we'll, uh, they'll probably get it in there. We're going to run it again. Yeah. First man through into the end zone, standing up. Grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. Ain't nobody tackling. Hold the guard in for six. So the guard keeps us clean sheet here with a five yard run off the left side. Excellent work. So let's see if this extra point is good. It's starting to be kind of critical the way this game is going. Each team has the ball and scores. That's an extra point. It's going to make a lot of difference if you miss one. Yeah, every point matters. It's special forces teams here. Looks good. Looks good is good. New score, 14 all. Snohomish and the Storm Rays. Back after this, 604 in the second on SDSBN. This is the most interesting. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Back to it on STSPN. Amp Harrell, Ron Hinthorne along with you. Taking a look at your playoff scenarios, if you will, because we've still got this game and one more to play in league. Yep. So the number four from the south, which that's the three-way tie, Shorewood, Shorecrest, and Snohomish, um, number four in the south will play at number four in the north, which is projected right now to be Stanwood. They're hosting Getchell, and they'll play at Ferndale next week. Who, who plays at Ferndale? Uh, that would be Stanwood. Stanwood does. Look at yeah. Getchell and Ferndale, last two. Here we go. Third possession for Shorewood. Nice Trying to get there. the edge and squirts free for a moment, but not far enough. Finnegan Beckler stopped at about the 25. 26, 27. We'll keep counting. It's like uh, football on Sesame Street. Get the count. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Two yard run. Ah, ah, ah. Here is. People uh, ask me, what's, what's your favorite vampire for uh, Halloween? They say, uh, the one from Sesame Street. Well, he doesn't count. Oh, I assure you, he does. Yeah, he counts. One, two, three. Just under six minutes to play here, first half. 14 all. And again, two possessions each side, two touchdowns each side, and about five pass attempts total. Oh, oh option. Nice, oh, nice oh, pitch. Nice pitch as he hung on to it. He got close to the down with you where he actually ran the bounce on I don't think he quite made it. I think that was about the... 36, he needed the 37. This will be second and short, but 
Uh, it was it was hard to handle, but he corrals it, and that's again, Nico Zacharias. And it did. It has been an all Nico show. Speaking of Halloween counts, do you think Count Dracula counts? Well, I think he counts for this uh, for this particular uh, conversation, but uh, not sure what his uh, Transylvanian math skills are. Okay. I also well, wouldn't count on him on a second one either. I wouldn't either. Whistles. And everybody looks to the sideline like, what just happened? No, it's just getting another play call. I'm not sure how they get their, their calls in really. They kind of look around the post and see what's going on across the field. Right? <laughs> Under five to play in the half. There's another pitch near side. Zacharias, one on four. Good open field tackles. He got blown up, but he got the first down. Definitely, yep. Yeah. And on the stop, I believe that was uh, Mark Brownfield. He will zig and then zag. And actually, he didn't clean that one up. That was uh, one of the one of the linebackers stepping in. First and ten, storm race. Yeah. If you're wondering why I keep saying storm race, it's because I'm trying to teach that to myself. But they they changed the nickname a couple seasons ago, and Shorewood Storm Race, the mouthful. We're going to be official. Ooh, this direction good. and surging ahead. Guess who? That would be Nico Zacharias again. Three straight plays. That will be like so what is one or four? Good question. That is, that's a good question. I don't have an answer, but it, oh. I'm just saying it's a good question. <laughs> I, oh. I got a lot of good questions. Oh. You got to have some answers. Man. I, I should have some answers, but uh, I'll, I'll see if I can uh, effort that one. If it's, it's the sun shining when the storm happens, maybe. Maybe. That's a good guess. Got the lightning bolt on the uh, logo, which I believe is on those black helmets. Maybe it's a lightning in the storm. Perhaps. A little uh, give on the inside. That time it was Reed Petrol. I think that was just a straight dive. Yep, it rides in behind the center and guard. Good six on the for first down. That keeps the chains moving. Keeps the clock moving. Approaching three and a half to play. Order number two. This is going to be one of those, if they don't start passing the football, then uh, you know, dinner's not even going to get cold. Yeah. A little uh, southern come out in there for me. <laughs> yeah. Give first man through again. He is not protecting that football all that well, running upright, but it's about three, I think. Do you eat dinner or do you eat supper? It <laughs> depends on how hungry I am. <laughs> Sometimes you eat both. That's okay. <laughs> but what about second breakfast? Well, uh, that. Let's see if Sherwood's got to keep moving the ball here, man. This is. They yeah. run, their, run their game. They're pretty well, good. Only about a yard and a half that time. Second down and long. Wing to the left, and he'll motion in the backfield. Snap it again into round, and he is spun down at about the 41. Good run. Nico. That's about four to go for two losers with the tackle. Third and four, maybe. That sounds about right. Yeah, and third and a solace four. Four. Got to ask, who you got uh, tomorrow, uh, dogs and ducks? That's going to be a tough one. It's, uh, I wouldn't bet any money on either one of those two games tomorrow. But, uh, I'd bet on a good game, that's for sure. Yeah, and it might rain, so that might make a difference. We'll see. I do not have uh, any plans of uh, being on Montlake tomorrow. It's going to be a madhouse. No. Straight drop, swings that's that one out. Five time there. First pass for a while. Yeah. That's the I'm going to avoid my leg, but I'm going to go down to Seattle and see Guns N' Roses. Hey! <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Plenty of respect for my broadcast partner here. Didn't even realize GNR was bringing the noise. Oh, yeah. Probably one of the last times they'll make it. they got a crazy bunch of tourists. Though. They tour every two or three days there. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know how they do it. There's a lot of money, though. Oh, yeah. That makes it a whole lot easier. Clock stopped at two minutes to go here. It's not the two-minute warning, but it was an incomplete pass on third down. So fourth down and about four from the 41. They're going to take a timeout here. They're going to take a timeout to have some extra time to talk about it. Two-minute warning at Snohomish. Back after this. High game on SDSDN. Thanks to Les Schwab tires. I'm a constant backseat driver, but mine's a little stressed about spending. 
Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Back here on STSPN, out of the second of three timeouts for Sorwood. And got to gotta keep that last one in your pocket because you might need it. Fourth down and three or four yards to go here. You might need that one, but they sure, I think, did the right thing by calling this one as the coach and young players out there. I think you want to make sure that every one of them knows exactly what this play is and what you want to do because this is a critical play for them to get this down here. And try to make that score before halftime. Trying to get uh, some score updates, but instead I just wind up getting an ad. <laughs> that wasn't what I wanted. Oh, Woodenville and Bothell tied at seven in a second. We already mentioned Monroe doing Monroe things. Oh, that's going to give the ball. That's going to give them the first down, I think. I thought it was on offside. Well. Regardless, they, they do sweep up the left side and pick up the first down anyway. Oh, there is a flag. Okay. Yeah. Good eyes. Yeah. I Now, Joey Hammer down there saying it's against uh, Stroke. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I think you're right. I think that's a, that's a encroachment on the defense. But yeah. that doesn't appear. That's not what the call was, though. No, I, no, I think it's calling against Sherwood. Okay. Well. That, that Joey Hammer down there waving his hand. Tell the referee what he can call. <laughs> Politely, of course. Oh, oh, Getchell yeah. with a 14 to nothing lead over Stanwood. That's important in the north side of Wesco 3A. Well, this is a different development now. Now you got a fourth and 10 here. They're going to punt. They're going to have to punt this one and try to get out of this at halftime and hold the uh, moments to no score. He's going there at high school at halftime. Good for First defensive stand. Wow, that was almost blocked. I thought for a minute it was. I couldn't see the ball. And so it will bounce and be touched dead at about the 30. Look at that the lights there. All of a sudden, all I can see bright lights are looked up. Good credit to Ty Tautolo hitting in there and very nearly blocking that one. So if you're Snohomish now with a minute 46 to go, you're going to like to uh, lay this out. Throw some big bombs down the field and you can beat them on the run. Well, you got all three of your timeouts left, so I don't see any reason to get away from it, although I am shocked I haven't seen a screen pass yet. Well, not a single one from either side. But I, don't, I don't think it's probably a good idea. These get both get the big kids on the line. That takes, they don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they just stay home. It was like, oh, this is my spot. Don't come near me. Don't stay in here. Well, you would say that on a on a draw play too, but those have gone for five yards of wax. So, and yeah, they went around by me. Snap, give inside and hand off. And yeah, we got a whole lot there. So it's let him keep going. He's not going. Yeah, I've gotta gotta be wise about your timeouts. Getting you know, about two and a half there. They don't seem to be in any hurry to burn the clock on this. You know, the clock's running in 24, 23, 22. Yeah, you're right. They're not even hustling the plays in. So we may just have ourselves a stalemate going to the locker room. But Here's let's see. Game. Straight He's drop. Play. Hesitates. Pressure in his face. Dumps that off. Nearly intercepted. Yeah, it was not a good throw. He was forced to throw that. Was good. Good run back to Yeah, Blitz got in his face, rolled him out of the pocket. That was... Uh, Mitchell, I don't know, 14, that gave a little pressure there, I think. For a Salem Mitchell, 6'4", 170. Only in high school, you see stat lines like that one. Handle the tape. 14 all here. Clock stopped on the incompletion. Third down and eight. Now wind up and throw it again. That's all you can do. You might as well go for it. Try to get that open man down there. You receive, or excuse me, receiver either side. Now they'll go rocket motion. Fake on the inside, and it's a sack. Oh, it's taken down. Hammer just got bowled over, and there's the timeout. 59 seconds, 58. There. No timeout. They okay, they did finally get that timeout whistled in with 56 seconds left, and it's fourth down and about 11. 
They're going to bunt it. Okay, we're going we're gonna to see our first defensive stalemate here. Both sides stopped for the first time on their third possession. And we got a timeout for sure, what I think. So, additional timeout. Yep. So, we'll step aside for a quick break here. Back with the fourth down punt on STSBN. <laughs> It's like a loot machine. Going around town, trying to get it down. It's like a loot machine. Back here on STSPN, Shorewood with the timeout, and that's their last one. So they wanted to make sure they got this football back. We'll snap it with a minute one. And they got yeah, put that one second back on the clock during that timeout here. 14 all, and here goes the punt, and it is a low wobbler, but it gets past any potential blockers <laughs> and is touched down at the 40, so I'll call that a win. The clean punt got that one away from Huber. And so one last attempt at this for Shorewood before we head to the locker room for halftime festivities. Yeah, well, Shorewood has been running the ball really well, but with 15 seconds left on the clock here and the ball pretty much on the 40-yard line. And no timeouts. No timeouts. I'm going to throw the ball. Yeah. They, they've. But I'm going to throw it deep just in case... <laughs> Throw it, throw it deep but to the sidelines. Yeah, just in case uh, I can't throw it that far. Well, the, the other thing to keep in mind is that first score of this game was a pass play. 27-yarder to Zacharias. All right. Palmer. Palmer from the gun this time. He's going to throw it. Three to the left. Drops, feels the pressure, steps up, going to run. Needs some help, doesn't get it. He'll roll forward for a game of about... Yard and a half. Uh, good defense by the only show is he could look downfield. I don't know if they covered that downfield on the replay, but he had everybody covered, so he didn't know where to show up. Back to work quickly. Good pressure, Jude Lewis going right up the gut. 25 seconds left. Got to hurry. They don't seem to be in a hurry to run a play, though. Know? Get everybody set. Double wing. 18 seconds on the clock. Might be it. Pressure again on the blitz. Dumps it off. Shoe tops incomplete. That'll stop the clock. Ten seconds to stop the clock. Yeah. So third down and call it nine. Ten seconds left. After that incompletion. And the umbrellas are out on the other side. Then you see a little, oh yeah, it might look like a little rain comes down. I don't know. Nobody no. else seems to be busting them out. Is that like a halftime performance thing? That's part of the band over there, isn't it? What is that? Part of the halftime ceremony with umbrellas? Maybe. Yeah. 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 Ten seconds mm-hmm. left. It's not Royal raining. Court. Okay. Yeah, not raining yet. Yep. This direction. They will go with the inside handoff. And that's going to do it. So we're going to go to the locker room. Three straight defensive stands after four straight scoring drives. Yeah, amazing first half. A lot to talk about in the halftime locker room right now, too, but uh, we'll have a ball game here tonight, yeah? Yeah, hey, we expected a dog fight, and we're certainly getting one. Shorewood and Snohomish tied at 14 on homecoming night for the Panthers. We'll take a break. Back with more a little later on on STSPM. Schwab tires. I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, 
Breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back, and you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Wolfpack, this is Switch Doctor, request immediate contact strike. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. I heard a crack and there's water everywhere and... Bend at the knee to spot the leak. Didn't think I'd find you there, huh? So, can you fix it? Oh, thank goodness. You're all set. Have a good day. with us the new generation the next level sending it big oh, my in for a good run let's go come with us to the track to the trails to the slopes to the surf to the fight to the race Look at this. to the 4 a.m. starts training harder pushing further hitting back to the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us to the blood, to the sweat, and the broken bones. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. To the world titles. Fast, cool, to the world's first. The world's best. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at bickford.net.
and I left for extensive clothes. After high school, Bella will be attending a four-year university to get her bachelor's degree in aeronautical science. Bella is joined by her parents, Lindsay Carey and Curtis Egerberson. Karen Sadie has learned a good music. Karen is a joint serving as a public relations officer and has other leadership roles during her time at SHS. She is also a part of the National Honor Society, Big Group, and is excited for her senior season on the softball team this spring. After high school, Karen plans on attending a four year university to continue her athletic career. She plans to study exercise science with hopes to work and train with athletes. Cameron is going to the next Joel and Dave Sage. Next, we have Carly Sage, who is boarded by Kate Strickland. At SHS, Carly is in the garden here with the crew at the environmental school. After graduation, Carly plans on going to a four year college in the state to get her bachelor's degree in music and mass management. Carly is joined by her parents, Anna and Pat Sage. Brenda Smith, as we have Brenda Bell. 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 Brenda Smith, as we have Brenda after high school, Canada plans to attend a four-year university and major in neuroscience. She also has been having a traveling goal and joined in the study of the law during college. Canada is joined in the parents, Shannon and John Smith. Next, McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires.
generation. The next level. Sending it big. Oh, my goodness! In for a good run, let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this! To the 4 a.m. starts, training harder, pushing further, hitting back, hard. To the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us to the blood, to the sweat, and the broken bones. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. To the world titles. To the world's first. The world's best. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. Searching for meaning in a relentless world. Always connected, but somehow alone. Trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins awakened by a calling united by purpose defined by the cause you fight for it's not about you we gotta get over the mountain. no one can ever take away you are in this room what it means to be among the few the proud, the Marines. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust, the one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's.
Going back to Florida one day. David E. Coach from 1981. Coach from 2021. Lori Smith Merritt from 1998. Eric Merritt from 1997. The house. Doug Howell. Sandy Howell. Jerry Howell. 2004, 2005, and 1972. Peter Herrick, 2000. Gail Oakland, 2000. Adam Taylor and Barry Taylor, 2000 to 2021. Kelly Osterholtz, from 99. Todd Brown, from 1979. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. Back to work. 14 all. Amp Harrell and Ron Hinthorn along for the ride. Presented by Les Schwab Tires. 14 all. Recap the scoring for you quickly. 747 left to go in quarter number one. A 27 yard touchdown pass. Palmer to Zacharias made it 7 0. Storm Rays. Cole Bedard tied it up with a 40. Uh, 13 yard run, excuse me, with 47 seconds left in the first quarter. Zacharias 73 yard run to make it 14 7, and that was caught with a knee down. So that's where you the saw that. Have it. You saw that. It's the referee saw that too. And uh, Cole Bedard with a five yard run to uh, tie that up with 6.04 left in the first half, 14 all. And then we, well, traded defensive possessions. Be interesting to see what happens in this second half here uh, after the strange first half. Get the ball score, get the ball score, get the ball score. <laughs> that was four straight scoring possessions and then three straight defensive possessions. Yeah, well, Snowman's got the ball now, and they got the 30-yard line. Let's see what they come out with in halftime. Same, same game plan? Toss. Looks like the run to start with. Going you know, left and tripped up from behind. Good defense by Salem Mitchell. Running him down from behind after no gain. Reed Petrol apparently also in on the stop. Two sticks. <laughs> Two sticks. Nice. Anything you would have changed for either team coming out of the locker room, Coach? I think uh, I would, if I were Snohomish, I think I would open it up a little more passing. Uh, I think they got a better chance that way than just running it out. That would be my strategy right now. And you have on the inside, and shoving it up in there is Bennett for a a little bit better of a game that time. Game of about six. They're probably going to stick with their first game plan and just kind of try to run the ball and see if they keep moving it down the field like they did, which worked for them. And if that doesn't start working for them, I think they will open it up and start throwing them more. Because David Hammer is a good passing quarterback. And it just hasn't really worked out for him thus far in this game. But, yeah, he has shown he can uncork one. That is for sure. Straight eye behind him. Give to the first man through, hit immediately, and no. goes 
virtually nowhere. He might have lost. Yeah, I think out. he did lose about two feet. So that'll be a three and out and punt in time. I mean, well, so far, the running blade did not work for the homish. <laughs> well, just like you draw it up. Uh, I got score updates. I'm curious if you have any from scores around around the league. Go ahead. Well, I got uh, Woodenville 28, Bothell 7 at the half. I also have a final 40-31 to 31 Cascade defeats Metadale in the early game. Okay. Punt is away. Low wobbler that will take some friendly rolls for Snohomish. And they'll <laughs> friendly blow that one dead. Okay. Yeah, kind of blow it down with a little wind there as far as it's going to get. Uh, 21 to nothing is what I have for Monroe at the half over Edmonds Woodway. Right. And I also have at the half Getchell leading Stanwood 14 to 7. And at a final from yesterday, Concrete over Tulela Heritage 40 to 16. Okay. Well, that's good. We'll get some more updates here as things progress, I will see. So we're. And we don't have the uh, the GP score, but I, I've got to got to tap into my resources here. Toss going right, big hole. He got eight or nine yards out of that one. Yeah, it's Nico Zacharias shot out of a cannon over there. Nico Zacharias and five eleven one seventy five. He is a skinny speedster. He's a storm ray. What is a storm ray, by the way? Oh, yeah. we did in fact do our investigation. Yeah, we that, did. That's inspired by a. Uh, a, an electric ray, a Pacific electric ray. So it's a stingray. It's a fish. Yes. Fear Elect- of the fish. And it has nothing to do with the weather. Nope. Although the uh, the student-produced video to introduce the mascot did have some lightning effects on it. So pretty cool. It was inspired by the way that uh, that a fever of stingrays moves as one. I'd love to see if these storm ray stingrays can move it down the field here for another yard and get a first down. See if they can stir up that fever. Ooh, in this not direction. This not no, this no, sir. Stood up and thrown down a variety of folks we could call out on that one, but Lewis led the way from his D tackle spot. And that'll be a loss of about a yard and a half, so second, or excuse me, third and a long two. So the running play, not doing what it did in the first half here in the second half. Well, we'll get one more chance to see what happens here. Where they're forced to throw it, they'll run it, I'm sure. I believe that's two sticks behind him. Motion, option, keeps it himself, and Palmer will get the first down out across the 40. He followed right right through the pole there, right right up in front of him there. Took a couple days down the way. And he just shoves that one up in there with no fear. Dragged down by, I have 70 in red. That is Mark Brownfield. Brownfield gets the start at the other defensive tackle spot. First and 10 storm race. I think the computer simulations, the Anders 3 computer projections, I think they had Snohomish getting the win here. They were favored slightly, but I don't, you know. High school football is hard to hard to pick them. Absolutely. Option, and then he slipped down. Get nowhere on that play. I think the old turf monster got him. Sub checking into the game for Snohomish. That's Manuel Malgesini, 5'8, 292, a senior lineman. Second and call it 10, no gain. Nobody in any kind of a hurry here. This has been a churn the clock, keep it going kind of kind of night. Takes a uh, full, full amount of time between plays here. So. Charlie Fry still waiting to be noticed. Receiver to the near side. And they'll go with a sprint pass. It's blown up by the blitz, and he'll just crawl forward. Ball came loose, but they're going to say he was down. Yeah, they he was down. But officially no gain because the official stands on the 40. That is tough. Watch the replay here. He had that sprint pass, and oh, yeah, no, yeah ground can't cause a fumble, right? Yep. Hit the ground with the ball. 
close, though. Yeah, we have the fans here booing, but uh, we have the benefit of the replay. Yeah, and we got an injured. Uh, yeah, that's the quarterback. Right down there. Or is that is that five or six? No, that's six. six. That's the quarterback. Yeah. And yeah. he took a lick trying to extend the play. Yeah. And don't like, need, we don't need him hurt because he's the second quarterback <laughs> up, and uh, we need. Oh, that's right. You you. you well, we'll catch the slow motion replay and see if we can see what happened. Watching this in 60 frames per second, by the way, on STSPN, as he will leave the field high stepping under his own power. But let's just see what happens. He sprints back, needs a block, gets the first one, but not the second. He'll step up. And then as he is dragged down, I think his knees got tangled up with Logan Willis. So he'll be put back in there and take his place now with number thir- is that 13? No, it's five going under center. Five. That's the uh, kick returner, Finnegan Backler. So Backler drif- drifts back to the gun. That's a passing formation on third and ten. Straight drop, blitz comes, fires. That one is <laughs> way short incomplete. of the mark. So he caught it on a hop. So, Backler could not get that one to go. I think Tautolo got involved in messing that play up, and so it's punting time going back the other way. Well, unfortunate for Sherwood there that uh, I guess he got himself hurt on that play. We'll see if he's going to be able to get up and get it back out there in the next possession as uh, Sherwood gets ready to punt here. He also plays linebacker, so we'll see if he comes out on defense as well. Maps back, clubs this punt away. Plenty of pressure, but it will angle out of bounds around the 34 or so. And they'll say 36. 36. Not bad. Good guess on that angle. (laughs) It's uh, about um, Pythagorean theorem and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. 14 all. How about that? Four straight scoring possessions, followed by five straight defensive possessions. That's a crazy way watching this ball game tonight, having having that sort of stuff happen. So we'll see if the homers going to change their game plan up here now, since it didn't work last time, or maybe they'll give it one more shot again that try that running game again. So Is David that? Hammer, Hammer under center still. There's the handoff. We are live on the air here on SDSPN. We forgot to turn the on-air sign on, so you'll see that the next studio shot. Don't don't turn any more air on. <laughs> cool breeze here. Second down, and there we go. Look at that. Yeah, it looks great. Now, it hasn't started raining here yet, but it is raining around in the area different places. I did hear it was raining out by Monroe, which is about 10, 15 miles from here. So. Yeah, but that's off to the, uh, the east of here, right? East of here, yeah. So Second down. And a give on the inside. Nice downfield block by Bosa. And he army crawls over the guy he took out. Just swabbing the hole right there on a big carry by, well, losing my place, Nelson. And he made the first down. But there's a flag down there. Let's see what's going to happen here. Probably going to go against the homies because they backed yeah. all the way up down to the 20-yard line there. And Which that seems to indicate it would be a hold. I didn't see anything there, but then again, I was watching the downfield block. Well, they moved it back to the original line of scrimmage with second down. So. Second down and call it 11. So I guess that was procedure. Under six to play in the third. Now more trickeration as they'll motion into the eye. Snap. Play fake. Looking downfield, has a man, has him free, and incomplete. (laughs) Looking for the money ball there to Mason Surdy. Defender fell down. So there you go, Coach. You were were wanting it all. Defender could not keep up with him, and Surdy can't catch it. He can overthrow him a little bit there, which gives you an idea how far Hammer can throw that ball. So he's got to have somebody fast enough to run under it. He's got that baseball delivery, just winds up and flings it. Third down and 11 for Snohomish. Five straight stops 
on defense here. We're going for six. Well, we'll have to see. Third down and 11. This this would be the six if the Storm Rays can hold here in a tied game, 14-all. And game. whistles. False start. Free snap penalty. That's going to pull it back another five yards and make it third and 16. That may be a break for the homies because they had nowhere on that uh, quick little handoff there. Now, third and long, extra long, third and 15 or so, they're going to have to, they might just let this one fly. Have not had a score of any kind in this game until the 6.04 mark of the second quarter. That's hard to believe. No. Snohomish. First, first it was an offensive game, now it's a defensive game. Snohomish and Stanwood fighting for that fourth spot in Wesco 3A South. Every blade of synthetic grass significant in this one. Are there blades of synthetic? Yes. Drops back, oh. fires that one a little too high. That, and That was a floater up there. That looked like something I could run under and catch. Yeah, Bosa was trying to catch it while kind of flipping over bottom of your screen. Wee! Could not corral that one, and he's mad at himself. But that'll be the sixth straight stop. And now on to punt. It's Huber. Out of the snap of a bood. Motion comes across. There the snap back. Actually, it's Cortez with the punt this time. Good and, punt. Uh, uh, trained animal right there. Just rolls inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. And Shorewood will try this thing again. Wow. Defensive ball game turns out here after a wonderful starting offensive ball game. Let's see if uh, the, the Sherwood Storm Rays can come up with something different, but it's not in their game plan. They're they're not a passing team, so yeah, this, I don't expect them doing anything except run right now. Yeah, they've they've been able to get a little bit out of the passing game when they've needed it, but oh, uh, and for those who are curious uh, for other coverage, well, we'll get to it after this play. Running up inside with little two sticks, that being Reed. Petchel, uh, Cedar Crest, uh, or yes, uh, Cedar Crest at Everett uh, tonight on KRKO. The Red Wolves. So after that inside handoff to Petchel, they got about a yard. Yeah, KRKO broadcasting from Everett Memorial Stadium tonight. KRKO.com if you want to listen to that and watch us. Then you don't have to hear me. Who would want to do that? Yeah, it would be kind of confusing. Inside handoff that time, decent surge and a late push as well. Who comes out from the bottom of that pile? Oof. That was, again, Reed Petchel. Sticklemeyer in there in there as well, blocking, but a lot of beef on top of him. Reed gets a lot of, a lot of action down there for sure with tonight, so... Yeah, they went with uh, with Petrol, and they went with Zacharias for pretty much every yard they've gotten. Yeah. Well, Zacharias, we've got a couple of touchdowns, so we've got to keep giving it to him every now and then, too. 27-yard touchdown pass and a 73-yard touchdown run. So he has all of their touchdowns. All both of them. Yes, all both of them, indeed. Ah, good effort by Snohomish there, surging to the ball carrier. Cole Bedard and Brownfield. Mark Brownfield. Yeah. Cole Bedard, Mark, they, they knew that was coming. Also getting in there, Logan Willis just overran it. Yeah, good hustle. Well, there you go. Still a defensive ball game. So always holds again. Fourth down and five. Almost feel like the next team to score could just walk away with one here. It's very possible. So let's see what the punt game looks like. For the Storm Rays. It's a pretty good punt. Oh, that's a nice punt. Billowing punt and taken at the 34. He's got some running room. 30 up the left side. Needs a block. And he runs out of range. Got a good, good 30 yard return out of range. Oh, it's nice, nicely done. Yeah, Mason 30 has had himself a coming out party today. So they they almost <laughs> didn't get anything out of that punt. They, oh. 
Did I hear a penalty goes against Shorewood? I didn't see a penalty. I didn't see a flag, no. And they're going to decline it. Okay. Yeah, I would. So. Must have been a hold. I didn't see the signal, though. So, either way, after the declined penalty, it's first and ten for the Snohomish Panthers on homecoming night. Penalty on the client. 2.33 to go in the third in a tied ball game. Slow third quarter here compared to the way the first two quarters ran. Yeah, a couple of incomplete passes will do that for you. Yeah. So should we yeah. find a penalty? The kick over first and ten. First and ten from the 38 is where they'll mark it ready. They haven't got the sticks in the right place yet. Okay, you're right. They haven't figured it out yet. They're still talking about it. Well, they, they let Snohomish decline the penalty, but I think it depends on what the penalty is because you know, it could be a tack on. It could be an undeclinable. Yeah, they're having a conversation about that now. And uh, even though the PA announcer said that uh, Snohomish had the ball and was going to take over on 30, they're not going to do that yet. Well, either way, as we sort this out, I want to thank our sponsors, including Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing in our community, and Adrenaline Fundraising, proud to sponsor the player of the game. Uh, as we are going to hand out some shirts once this thing's over with. We are doing that, yeah. Got a long way to go before this one's done, though. One of our big local sponsors here, McClendon's Hardware, is one of the better places to go. Oh, Maybe, yeah? M- Daniel's Hardware, I mean. Well, them too, yeah. <laughs> but them too. Have it. Oh. The, the, McCle- uh, the Mc- uh, McDaniel's Do-It Center. How about that? Go. McDaniel's Do-It Center. Uh, that's where I've gotten a lot of my uh, supplies for planting my garden. Hey, it's, they've been our sponsor for about 14 years, but maybe not now. <laughs> oh, he's a buddy. He'll, he'll be all right. Brad, I apologize for my broadcast partner, McDaniel's Do It Center, doing it for us and possibly doing it to... So I made two mistakes tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back to work here on first down. Inside run. And that was Cole Bedard. Penalty marker. Another flag. It's a personal foul chop block. That's going to move him back a ways. That's going to hurt. That's a, that a 15 yarder? Let's, let's see. Watching the dial down over there. There's five. There's ten. There's fifteen. Okay. You don't. I mean, it's a personal foul, so I should have known better. But that is a tough spot for Snohomish here. They get the ball with fantastic field position in a tied game, late stages, third quarter, and the penalty bug bites you right in the keister. 225 left in the third. We haven't had a score of any kind since the 604 mark of quarter two. Yeah. Well, we got a second down still now. Clock oh. since first on the Yeah, first and first and twenty five. That was uh, uh the sideline mark which is no I guess it does say one behind the pool, I couldn't see it. Give that time. Zaya Nelson. Zaya Nelson with a carry. Nelson will get what he can back out of it. Second down and yes. Short gain on the play. Second down and clear view. Call it 23. Under two minutes to play. Quarter number three. Nothing decided here just yet. Going to be a good play to score in this half. In this quarter four, uh, Jones as well because it's Clock's are running down on them right now. Yeah, under 90 seconds to play here in the third. Steaver to either side. I backfield. Play fake. Pressure. Ooh. Oh, he gets out of it. He gets out of it. Oh, love it. And that launches was, that one forward. That was they're gonna say they're gonna say that was not flute. Okay, they are gonna say that was incomplete. Everybody was jumping on that thing like it was knocked out from behind. Yeah, and then and hammers down. Uh oh. Hey. Yeah, Hammer is is down. He got hit pretty hard on that play and just kind of threw it out there. Dangerous pass to let go, but uh, sorry to see the young man down again because he was out for a couple games a couple weeks ago. And last thing you want to do is have him 
be out again before the end of the season right now. And we may need to step aside for a, for a break here. He is getting attended to on the field. 14 all, 107 left in this one as the quarterback getting checked out by his coaches and medical staff. Both the head coaches are out there. That's kind of nice. And he is being helped up, so Rob he Pitch, will. Rob Pesch is out there as well. Didn't want him to get hurt. He got blocked this time. And he will have to check out for a play, which will put in the backup quarterback, which is uh, LaRue. Watch this. He rolled into trouble, and then he got wiped out. Yeah, lucky he didn't get in except the back of the so. Salem Mitchell. And so according to the depth chart, it's going to be LaRue coming in for a play, LaRue at least. going to be the quarterback for Stavlovich. That's actually going to be number three. Yeah, that's Surdy will check in as a wide receiver. I didn't see LaRue coming in. Oh, there he is. He's off the camera shot, but uh, he wears 42, which is oh, going to be an interesting number for a quarterback. But the Reeve LaRue will bring in the play with a minute seven left, third down and 23. Well, I think he's going to hand it off. What do you think? I think that's a pretty safe bet here. <laughs> yeah, let's, don't get too crazy with him getting there right here. I backfield. Surdy goes in motion. And he throws it. And he will sling this one across his body too high, oh. nearly intercepted. That one tipped off the fingertips of the tight end, Bosa, and then nearly intercepted by the Storm Rays. Uh, just. Well, it might have been a good call, but it was a good, wasn't a good play. Pass was just up there, a big floater waiting to get caught. So. Well, I mean, you, you put in the backup quarterback, Cold, and he slings one across his body. And just out of the fingertip reach of his receiver. Minute left in the third quarter. And now your quarterback is going to play jammer out there on the side on this punt. Gets this one away. That's a useful punt. That is a very useful punt. Inside the 10. Rolls to the 5. Rolls to the 3. Hang a gold star on that one. That is phenomenal. Oh, advantage Panthers on that play because they were going to come to the end of this period with the storm rays down there close to the goal line, and they if they don't move it very good, then the Panthers are going to get the ball back in good field position for this fourth quarter start here. Well, how aggressive do you want to be on this one, Coach? Because uh, they're going to they're going to need to get out of the shadow of their own goalposts. If they sling it past your blitz. They could be running for days, but if you if you pop them in the mouth a couple times, you get the ball back and get a safety. Yeah, I think I'm going to give it to them with 13 on sweep. Probably the right call. They'll go inside on a trap instead, and we're going to play rugby for it. We have about a yard, yard and a half. Well, I did have Nico on sweep this in Pinnacle, so maybe they'll do it this time. I think that was Sticklemeyer on the inside draw. Ulrich among those on the tackle. I have probably one more play here before we take it to the fourth. Broadcast, of course, brought to you by our good friends at Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing. They are in no hurry in a tied ball game on Snohomish's homecoming. I think we're going to let this one go to the end of the quarter. Sure looks like it. Yeah. I may have overstated things here. Yep, <laughs> that will do it for quarter number three. We'll flip ends of the field. 100-yard we'll... walk. Yes, and when we come back, fourth quarter action, high game, Snohomish and Shorewood on STFBN. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back, and you know that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know them personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. 
I got a brotherhood. And it's a, it's a real brotherhood. And it's a loyal and honest brotherhood. And that, that's what matters. Back here on STSPN. The Shorewood Storm Rays and the Snohomish Panthers will flip ends of the field and try this again. Second down and seven from deep in their own end. Shorewood trying to get out of the shadows of their own goalposts. This has been a a rugby scrum here. Last score was with six minutes to go in the second quarter, Cowboy. Yeah, it's it's interesting. We went from an offensive game to a defensive game and just swung the momentum just like crazy here. Nobody's getting anywhere. Gatsby Palmer will give that one on the ground, surging left side. Got a few, maybe three or four at the most. Well, brings up third down at about five. And so do you dare put the ball in the air? They would, they would be better served to do so, but if they can get five yards, well... They can keep the clock moving and, well, get the first down, get the sticks moving. We'll see what happens here. Players to watch, 11, Reed Peschel, 12, Christian Sticklemeyer, and 13, Nico Zacharias. Palmer under the center, and then they will stand up. Uh, yep. here. Oh, did the timeout to the home. Oh, unexpected here with 11-17 left in regulation. 14-all. Time out on the field. Take it as well. Back after this on SDSBN. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years. They are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized do-it-best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. In 1934, Bickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family-owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net. Back to it on STSPN. Crucial third down and this direction on the inside dive. And, yeah, it's going to come up short. Third game on the play. Got a scoreboard update here on, uh uh-oh, we've got the big fella down. That is uh, Jalen Freudenthal. Injured player on the field. He was rolling around. Well, while they tend to him, 14 all here. Got to have every every guy running at full strength in this one. But got 11 minutes to go in this fourth yeah. period here in this tie ball game. It's, this is this, this is tough. It's tough, and then getting somebody injured out there. That's your uh, center for Shorewood. Or yeah, center for Shorewood, and I think he's also played some nose on defense as well. And they're gonna help him up and send in the replacement on fourth down and three. Ah, that's a lower body injury. Oh, they're sending for help to get him off the field. Help him off. So, punting time here for the Shorewood Storm Rays. I'm going to get to a few scoreboard updates. Monroe has extended their lead 28 to nothing over Edmonds Woodway in the third. Actually, 28 to seven. I update you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Getchell and Stanwood tied at 14 in the third. Cedarcrest 13 to nothing over Everett. That's the KRKO game. Cascade beat Metadale 40 to 31, and it's 28-14 Woodenville over Boffel. Oh, that could have got blocked. That was a dangerous punt taken at the 40 and stood up and stopped. I like the officials blowing that one dead quickly. Yeah. 
Because sure. he was stopped, his progress was stopped, and if you let that keep going, you have more injuries. Well, like I said before, with uh, Sherwood getting pinned down close to their goal line there, if they didn't move out of there, the Panthers were going to get the ball in good field position, and they're, and they're down there now with after that punt with the ball on, what, the 41-yard line about? Yeah, I'd say that's exactly the 41-yard line. First and 10 for the Snohomish Panthers. So it's a great chance for the Panthers to move in there on this one and break this deadlock. Oh, let's see what the Panthers can do here. Does uh, David Hammer come out at quarterback? He does. He does, yeah. He exited with a lower body injury, and so both quarterbacks have missed a play or two, but both are back out there. Toss, 30, coming around near side, and away he goes into that second level. I don't think they got the first down. Yeah, he's certainly close. So a nice big game. Boston first down. I think they should give it to him. They're looking at it. Now, let's see. Oh, we got a flag coming back? We got a flag. Oh, I didn't even see that one. A and it's a hold. And yeah. that's going to hurt. And that's not going to. Instead of a first down, it will be a. Uh, it will be a first down. It'll just be a first down and long. Down and goes against the home 20. Huh? Most likely. Depends on where the hold was. It was right behind the pole. That yeah, was right after the line of scrimmage. Yeah. First and 20 from the 49. Or the 51, if you're uh, uh, Steve Rabel. <laughs> 50 Rabel. He, he called a play out to the 52 about two weeks ago and then realized what he was saying and couldn't stop beating himself up over it. Yeah, that made the news for sure. 10.34 and the clock runs. We have not had a score since the six-minute mark of quarter number two. Not even close. No. 10-23. Tick, tick, tick. Nice to see Hammer back out there under quarterback, though, first and all. Did you know that you can do that? Hey, the quick hand off to yes. nowhere. Inside, and that is Bennett on the dive for about a yard. Brings up, call it uh, second down and 19. Nice tackle made by number 11, Pete Petschel. Petschel with the tackle. Now the ball's on the other sure, 51 the yard line. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, that that's actually the 51. The other one was the 49. Because <laughs> see, it, you start counting the other way when you go across the uh, uh, okay. in the positive direction. There you go. Back into the game for the first time in a while uh, is Step. So Ryan Step back in, which means Surdy is well. Surdy would have been out. Now they got them both out there. Both of those have split out wide. And, and run that rocket motion. Back to toss it out. There it is, out the spleen. And there's a completed pass. That'll be a gain of about eight or so. To Bosa. Still got a dozen yards to go. Oh. Be shocked if they put it in the air again. I think they should. 14 all. This is a very important game for postseason consideration because only four teams get it and... Shorewood, Snohomish, and Shorecrest are all fighting for that fourth spot behind Monroe, Terrace, and Edmonds Woodway. Yeah, well, the winner of this game is definitely going to make it, I think. And that's that's This is a critical game in that, in that sequence. Tight formation on third and 12. A Straight drop. Again. Swings mm-hmm. it out near side. That's step, and he is going to be cut down short. And so I think you got to go for it here. Yeah, you got about three or four to go. Yeah, it depends on where they put this one down. I thought it'd be more like two, but you yeah. may be right. I think he's got the, he's sitting there about two. Okay. The thirty-eight, you got to go to the thirty-one. Sorry, I mean thirty-three, and you got to go to thirty-one. Yeah, we'll call it two. Yeah. So fourth down and two. Breeze kind of kicks up through the booth here. Get a little bit uh, brisk out there. Temperatures dropping down. That's for sure. Get the, that little rain dampness in the air cooling things off quite a bit, but we've still got no rain really falling here, yeah. which is kind of surprising. It's kind of sort of raining all around us as I notice it. Play fake. Slings that one to Bosa. Go up and get it, young fella. Bosa. Nice for them. Nice for them. Tight ends rule. And he just posted up, put his hip into the defender, and they high-pointed the football. Uh, I, that's a play that I don't see why it doesn't happen Here's more in high school player. football. You got a big, tall tight end or a big, tall or a wide receiver, and you just cut straight across the middle and throw it up in the air, and 
He's the big guy that's going to go up and get it, you know? Well, I think the reason why you don't see it more often, well, there's two. One is you don't have a ton of, uh, of Boses out there. <laughs> and the other thing is if you go across the middle, you're going to get cracked. Yeah, but you're going to gain six or seven yards. If you hang on to the football, snap and a give, good run, that's Bennett. Good to five and six a week. That's lifted because of the first down. You get a little bit of mo. Snohomish is wanting to go down here and win this football game. He might have got seven on that one. Yeah, they're giving him progress of seven yards. 14 all. Mitchell again with the tackle. And that has been an Iron Man for Shorewood. Salem Mitchell, wide receiver, defensive lineman. You don't see that combo very often. Straight eye. Up the middle. Give. No right way. side. No. Tackle made by Reed Petchel. Reed Petchel with the tackle. What's, the what's Reed's number? That would be, be 11. I think it was, wasn't it? Double sticks. So brings up a third down and a long four. Down well, at the 16. We've been playing defense. I think we're still playing defense. So this is a big critical play here for the Sherwood Storm Rays to stop this particular drive right here and now on this play. And they do that. Big decision for the Panthers if they don't make first down. This yeah, good point. Now keep it right on the ground and right up the oh, gut. Yeah, all the way. And all the way to the end zone. Touchdown. Mm-hmm. Panthers. Paul Bedard. Normally it's right into your living room. That was right out of your living room. Touchdown Panthers with 6.01 left. Panthers have their first lead of the game. Hardly hard fought the battle all the way down the field to get to that point. Kind of broke him open there right at the end. Unfortunately, but let's see where he cut the line. Yeah, he cut, got this tackle in there. Smoked straight on through. Salem Mitchell had a hold of it. But if the point good. That's the point up and good. New score, 21 to 14. Snohomish with the advantage. See if we can step aside for a quick timeout. And back with more after this on STSBN. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation. Back to action here. It's the Homish Panthers with a little bit of swagger as they will boom this one deep. It's a laser beam. It's behind the returner, and finally he picks it up and decides, okay, I guess I will run. And Snohomish has all the mo as they fling Finnegan Backler out of bounds. Well, they got back to about the 20-yard line. Looks like about where he'd have been if it had gone in the end. Yeah. Not, not the worst thing that could have happened there for Sherwood. So pressure is on the Panthers now to maintain that defensive posture that they've been showing in this last two quarters here. And also pressure on Sherwood to get that score back and tie this game up. That's the first lead of the night for the Snohomish Panthers. Yeah, it is. That's right. Good call. They've been matching score for score, but they've strung possessions together, strung scores together. Bedard with a five-yard run at 6.04 of the first half. Bedard with a 16-yard run to get the lead with 6.01 left in the game. Toss going left and a little bit of surge. Gain of about three. By the way, just for the record, I think you got Gatsby Palmer back in there at quarterback for yep. the Sherwood team. And uh, even though he got 
slightly injured. It's apparently not injured enough. Both quarterbacks are getting slightly injured tonight, but both of them back in the ball game. Yeah. They didn't miss much time. Second down and seven after that carry. Is it raining, or is that just something I'm seeing on my screen here? I don't know. Okay. It's starting to rain just a little bit. <laughs> and rush up the left side that time. Funny thing is that most of the guys out there are just like, okay, it's raining. Don't care. And, of course, we don't have to worry about the uh, the fans in front of us because, well, they're under cover. Good first down there for sure. Where they're moving the ball down the field. And it looks like they planned on. And the curious thing here is clock running, five minutes left. If you score, well, do you play for overtime? Do you try and bleed down the clock and play for the two-pointer for the walk-off loan? Well, that's the decisions to make. Just got to score first. Yeah, got to score. That's the most important part. Snap, give, crashing his oh, way wow. through. Big, Big run. The first down. Man. I think he did make a first down. Uh, that was uh, Reed Petchel again. Yep, we're going to get it to him. First down for Good surge up front, and he just saw the seam and ran right past his lineman, Ben Jenkins. Pink undershirts here. Unique color combination for the Shorewood Storm Rays. Black, green, royal blue, and pink. Ooh, there's a bad uh, hand of this. Yeah, and he will, he will spin out of a tackle. Can we mark her down? This is coming back, I think. Or a hold or a crack back or something like that. You don't throw it in that spot, but just so much athleticism by that it, young man. It was a crack back. Yeah, you don't want to make it easy to call that penalty. The two flags will call the same thing. Yeah, normally, if you see multiple hankies, it's uh, for a good reason. And we'll have that to do all over again. Clock stopped 419. Not only does it cost them a few yards, it costs them a lot of yards from where they need to go. So now it's going to be first down and 20 from the 33. Probably not that many. The Hummings have a lot of turf to make up here with just 413, and now the clock winding. Well, it's not going to be your friend now. They'll draw it back to throw to find something. Oh, he's open. Wide open and gets out of bounds. That is a smart play. Another catch by Nico Zakarius. Got a lot of it back. He's only got about seven yards left to go, I think, six or seven. And uh, it is third down, isn't it? Third and second. That's going to be second down after that, uh, that penalty. That's right. Second down, and we'll call it seven. I got to tell you something. If Shorewood is able to, to mix things up and come all the way back, the shirt is going to that guy. <laughs> it has been the Zacharias show for Shorewood. Pretty much a lot, hasn't it? He has had both of their stores, and he has been their safety blanket. You have just crash off left guard, surging downfield. Big carry again for Fetchel. Across midfield down to the 45. Where is that the 55? Uh, yeah. Usually we don't go beyond the, the 53 or 54, yeah. <laughs> Either way, at the plus 45-yard line, first and 10. Box stop to move the chains at 356. And here we go. Storm Ray is playing their game right now. Yeah, in the middle. Good right in the about. middle. Keep the box three or four. Well, Bedard and I think Hernandez can on the stop. And about two and a half. So just for giggles, if they go down and score and they game ends in, in a tie, 21, 21, what's the rule? Well, you go to overtime. The sudden death of the That is a really good question. I have not reviewed my WIAA rule book recently. Sudden death overtime. And hey, for the not, Panthers, I hope they don't have to find out. But on the other hand, the Sherwood wants to go that way. That's another weird play as they as they gave it to Zacharias. He ran into his blocker, spun free of a defender, and falls forward for a gain to make it third down and a long five. Panthers almost busted that play in the backfield, but he didn't quite do it. Wow. Well, the, the hard part about handling that guy is you've got to finish the play. 
You can catch him all you want, but he's going to squirt free. Big, big play here for the Storm Rays. For the Storm Rays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ball came loose. Sliding on it was Charlie Fry. But... Okay, they're they're going to say that it was a fumble, and it's going to be fourth down in about 12. And so now you you got to go for it here because nothing good coming from punting when you're down by seven. Time out on the field. Time out with yeah. 25. And they didn't stop the clock. They'll have to put a few seconds back on, but uh, they'll call the timeout and talk about this as we will step aside for a break as well. 2.20 left. 21.14 is the home on SDSBL. Here on STSPN, fourth down and eleven. So nothing right on this, but the game. Twenty-one to fourteen. From the gun, it's a pass play. Ducks his head, sacks. That will do it. That will do it. Snagunis will take over. They'll probably have to get another first down, but. I think we have three left, so they can pretty much run out of options. I think so, but... Well, it's got three times not to slow it down. Snowers will take a look. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Two, three, 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 three. And a chance to salt away the victory on a homecoming night. And to keep their playoff hopes alive. We have a little rain coming in. You know, it's like Andrew, like you said, if you look on the screen, you can see a little bit of rain. I can see the lights there, but with the cameras picking up those backs, but I can't see looking out the window. Yeah, well, same. Yeah. I look out the window and it's it's dry as a bone, but I think the moisture has gotten to to the players here. Led to that fumble on third down. Gotta take care of the football. There's Cole Bedard on the dive. Well, just gonna run the ball for as many chances as they can here and run the clock down as far as we can. And there's first that, time out. Was that a timeout? Out yes. So we'll we'll hold it right here. See if I can run down some scores as Snohomish tries to take care of business here. Got one from uh from Boffle. Woodenville thirty one, Boffle fourteen from Pop Keeney. That one in the fourth. I have thirty five seven no good we at uh, Getchell 21 and Stanwood 14 in the third. And Cedar crashed over Everett in the third. 13 to nothing. That was on KRK. Yep. Final from earlier Concrete beat uh, Tulalem Heritage 40 to 16. And Cascade over Metadale 40 to 13. Or 40 to 31, excuse me. That's unusual. Get those transposed numbers. Well, it looks like uh, we're always going to pull this one out here, 21 to 14, and uh, we've got two minutes left to go in this ball game. We're going to do some uh, player of the game, alignment of the game awards here, my friend. What do you think we got going? Well, I think we might have more than more than just the two, but uh, I got to tell you, my player of the game, if Snohomish can salt this one away is the guy that they just gave the football to on first down. That's Cole Bedard. He's had uh, two touchdowns, the last two touchdowns in this one. Yeah. And they will give this time to a different running back in Nelson and another quick timeout. Uh, lineman of the game is going to be a little bit harder, but I uh, thought there was a, a solid bit of, of uh, play from Mark Brownfield. You've said his name quite a bit. Cole Bedard, the carry to see who else would be in the mix that uh, we haven't honored as much. Abood. Sherwood calls their final timeout. Sherwood calls their final timeout there. 
Yeah, I, I kind of think it uh, goes to Brownfield. All right, number 70. I think number 70 is is my leading candidate here if Snohomish can take care of business, but timeout with 2.01 left in the fourth. So uh, there's still a lot of ball game left. Shorewood, Shorewood wants the shirts too, and and they want to keep their playoff hopes alive. No, they don't have the ball, so it's going to be a little tough to do. Well, they got to get the stop on, on third down. They're out of timeouts. But if they can get that stop, they'll get this football back with uh, yeah, a minute 20, he'll say. First things first, though, they've got to get the stop, and Snohomish is going to try and get this conversion here on third and seven from the plus 46. Up by a touchdown. Motion. Give. With five. Oh, that's a first down, and he is running free. To the ten. To the five. Put it on the board. Touchdown. Snohomish will walk off with this victory. Zaya Nelson, the junior, with the score. Oh, I don't even give a play. (laughs) For excessive celebration. Oh, yeah. They they don't care. Yeah, that'll work. A 46-yard touchdown. Again, that was Zaya Nelson to put this one away. 27, an extra point pending, 27 to 14 with 151 left. And Snohomish will send the homecoming fans home happy. But Bentley uh, is going to be enforced on the kickoff or on the extra point here. What do you think? I think they're still discussing that, but uh, may want to put that on the extra point. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's not really going to matter much in a two-score game with a buck fifty-one left, but with no timeouts either. Yeah. But they'll have to follow the rule book. They haven't moved it off to it. Yeah, clock's going to start even on this play, so. Well, I guess we're going to start to the kicker. Yeah. On for point, Ethan Huber. And then whistles again. Free snap penalty. Free snap penalty. So let's see what happens here. Oh, God. Oh. Sure would. Yeah. Well, that's not going to hurt anybody. Either way, yeah. We're okay. just arguing over the margin at this can, point. Can they can they refuse that? I don't think so because they called it as a pre snap penalty. So that, that kick didn't happen. That kick didn't happen. I never saw it. Is that what you're trying to Exactly. Me? You don't hit the replay button. It didn't happen. All right. So a buck fifty-one left in this one, and we may be able to honor some additional Panthers when this one is over as well. Last home game for Snohomish is they'll go on the road to Monroe, and then hopefully, hopefully postseason run. At we will be at Monroe for that one, and and now. Next week at Monroe here on STSPN as well. And I don't know why they stopped everything again again. Well, got to get everybody in the right spot, I guess. So Huber for point again. Pick is up. Looks good. Is good. We'll step aside for a timeout here. Final 151 and we return. Snohomish 28-14 on STSPN. Oh. Back here on STSPN, final 151 of this one. Homecoming for Snohomish, and the Panthers doing well in the second half. It was 
punch, punch, counter punch in the first half. You know what? Well, then this game really could have gone either way and kind of like uh, a couple of breaks here and there. And just I think overall, Snohomish should played a little bit better game overall and deserved the win, but it could have gone either way. There's no question about it. Sherwood played a good game tonight, and they deserved the win just as much. Squib kick taken by an up back, dropped by an up back. He will surge ahead on this one. Wow, look Still at that. on his feet. That up back, by the way, was Nico Zacharias. Got to be careful with that guy. He's all the way up to the 38-yard line, yeah. Well, buck 44 left on the clock. And no timeouts. And no timeouts. Sherwood's got to throw the ball. Yeah, and they they have had some success, but not as much in the second half. They can't run the, can't afford to run the ball if they're going to try to score it all. So see what they can work out here. And launching that one. And toward the end zone, incomplete, looking for formerly the loneliest man in the stadium, Charlie Fry. He threw that a good 40-some yards, and oh. nobody could run under it. Yeah, he's he's got a cannon, and an ineligible man downfield. No, oh, that didn't hurt. No. Oh, wait, no. Did they call targeting against the homish? Yeah, that's what they called. They called targeting. Wow. Okay. That, I, I, Do we have that on a replay? I don't think so. And so so that will rush it down the field. I think we were all watching downfield. I'm guessing that was targeting hit to the head on the quarterback yeah, as he unleashed be. that one. And so now things get a little more interesting than they should be down to the 23-yard line. Now you can throw it into the end zone and get that touchdown and get close to the end zone. So it would be a moral victory here for sure with a score at least right now and get a chance for that onside kick if they can do it quick yeah. enough. There's Hopping the pass. Back. Oh, he's open, and he's got the ball. He dropped it. Incomplete. Good defense there. No, he just dropped it. I don't know if he knocked it out of his hand or not. Apollo Mason hit the PBU. The homish itching to get this win on homecoming night. Not much time off the clock on that one, but it's... No. 134 left. Clock stop on the incomplete. Good Lobs time. that one out. Zacharias. Breaking tackles. Oh, oh, and down, down to the five. five. He almost got all the way. And the clock will stop to move the chains. Sir was running up there. That one will spike it or not. We'll see what they're going to do. They're going to get it all set up real quick. Maybe they'll just punch it in right there. 124. Clock winding now. Yeah, run a play for sure. Palmer. Zing that one incomplete. Looking they, again to Zacharias. They can't afford to run a play because they got to run out of clock time. Sure they do, so they gotta, yeah, good point. Yeah, they, they want to run it there, but they can't run it there. Yeah. From the five. And Zoma should know they're not going to run it, so they got to just either force the pass to get out quick or cover good. And they're going to cover the back, pull back, and they got four up front. Minute 12 left. Motion, and there's a whistle. That's going to be like, What's procedure. Yeah. Dead ball. Ball start. Yep. That still doesn't hurt too much. Now, Robert will take that because the incompletion was as good as a timeout. Yeah. So then they get the penalty, and there's no runoff here, so... Jack Gallagher will come in as a wide receiver. We're seeing people I don't think we've seen all day because they're having to throw the football. See if they can get this one off. Thank you. From the 10. Second down to 10. Ball on the 10. Thorwood trying to make a game out of this. Straight drop. Little wiggle. Feels the pressure. Strong arms that one. Sliding grab made at the five. He needs five and blocks going to keep running. So yeah. they, they need to like spike it right now. That's what I would do. Oh, but it's third down. That's okay. They need a good block and play. Yeah. There we go. 
Looking for the fade. Pressure right up the middle. He's going to run out to the sideline. Stop, stop. Yeah. Fires to the back of the end. Oh, he got it. He got it in. He incomplete. Did. Oh, the out? Incomplete. I thought he had one foot in. Could not catch it. Could not oh. hang on. Oh. Wet football out there as well. I got blocked by the window screen. I thought he caught it and in ground, but he, he didn't hang on to it. <laughs> So, potential discussions of player of the game. My my projection was for Cole Bedard because uh, he had two touchdowns in this one. Uh, but David Hammers played a whale of a game play, playing through injury. We'll discuss. And now on fourth down, goal to go from the five. Good. Great drop. Roll out left. Brent left. Third Fires to the back of the end zone. Oh. Broken up. And a little little stare down there. I was afraid of a penalty, but Apollo Mason says, no, sir, not in my house. And that will pretty well put this one on ice. Sprint pass left. And a little thump. And Mason ices it. Almost could have caught it, but didn't. So there was a little... Little holding going on down there on the other receiver, but uh, it didn't get called. And if it didn't get called, it didn't happen. I didn't see it, did you? No. I, well, I, I don't know what you weren't talking about. That's right. So now you want to kneel on it, but uh, you're also back at your own fives. So uh, they can they can kneel anyway. Got to be careful, yeah. and they do. Oh, yeah. And that should should be it. I don't think they have to snap it again. I don't think they do. Let's see. There's any reason not to, so uh, we're we're getting a little bit feisty here, and the officials are sending them off the field, so yeah. they're not going to make them do it again. So Homish gets the win at home, gets the win on homecoming, 28 to 14. Yeah, S- stay tuned. I am going to head down to the field for some celebrations and some player of the game awards and. Uh, adrenaline fundraising player of the game and the Les Schwab lineman of the game. We've got plenty of shirts to hand out, so just stick with us through the break, and I'll be live from field level right after this on SDSP. All right, back. In 1934, Pickford Ford opened their doors in Snohomish, Washington, and they've been an active part of the community ever since. So when you're looking for a new Ford truck, SUV, or hybrid, or if you want to take advantage of your current car's value, start at the place you can trust. The one that's been around for 89 years and is Western Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Family owned Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or online at Bickford.net.
and Celeste Schwab tires. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. That's a little nuts. <laughs> Stop. All right, I have no Joey. Yeah, so am I. Okay. Well, I gotta find him first. Is it Red Hat? Anybody get Joey? Yeah, I was told somewhere in the crowd, so that didn't help much. Yeah, he's, he's in the middle of that somewhere. All right, we're, uh, we're getting summoned. So where do you guys want me? Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. There you got Joey right next. I got to you Joey. Up. Yeah, he's he's getting them. Are we live yet? All right, so we're gonna look up there. We are live. All right, are we live on the air? Okay, Amp Harold down here at field level, summoning the players of the game, summoning the defensive linemen for the lineman of the game award, and. <laughs> Coach Joey Hammer being enthusiastic here. So we are going to get some interviews with defensive linemen. And uh, just to make it super simple, we'll just have them introduce themselves and look up look up here. So, boys, you guys are getting some shirts. We've got five defensive linemen, linemen of the game shirts uh, from our proud sponsor, Les Schwab. If you guys want to look up there at the SDSBN banner. So who we got here? To, uh, name and... Uh, Position and how, how do you feel getting this win on homecoming night? Uh, I'm Renzo Del Corzo. I play left tackle and we've had a rough season But this we played as a team. This is beautiful. This is what we need to do. Hey, we keep playing like this Hey, Monroe, we coming for you. No, I'm just what are you about? Hey, there we go. What, what, what you got 54? Uh, my name's Jude Lewis We really are in this game. We came in here and we just put the drive in and at the end of the game we just flat out balled and won the game. Fair enough. 70, what you got? 
Uh, I don't know. We all did really good. We stepped it up in the fourth quarter, and we all did our jobs, and it turned out good for us. So, so look up there at the STSBN banner and uh, tell us your name and uh, and what was the key to this when you had a big game defensively. Uh, my name is Mark Brownfield, and I the key was just getting low because I'm a lot smaller than all the other guys, so I had to get low and stay on the line of scrimmage. So low man wins. Is that what coach says all the time? Yes, sir. All right, fantastic game. David Hammer, he is uh, one of our co-players of the game, so Adrenaline Fundraising MVPs. David, you've had a, a tough season. You've overcome some injuries. What's it like to get this one on homecoming? It's nice. We I, we installed a new offense this week. We executed it perfectly. It's just fun to be back with my brothers. Wait a minute. You in, you did a new offense this week. Tell me about that. Hey, we installed something new on Monday. When Coach Saunders knew it was going to work, hey, we believed him and we executed. It came down to execution and smash mouth. Just down, running the ball down the field. Excellent, excellent. Bosa? Yeah. We we got uh, we got a defensive lineman player of the game, but uh, you had a big catch when it counted going over the middle. I'm one of your biggest fans, so so what what you got, both? Thank you, sir. Well, our coach told us all week this game was gonna be won in the trenches, and I mean they were right. They outweighed us by a heck of a lot, and we got it done up there. Even though we were smaller than them, hey, we they had some big plays, and we came back and got it done. All right, so, Ab, let's see if you can put some shirts in some so, of those so guys. The, the the passing game was uh, was difficult tonight but you went over the middle and, and and got got it done how much how much does it take to get somebody to go over the middle and make that big grab though i mean they called that play and it's called why dump i'm the only person out of route so i knew i had to i knew i had to make that catch but i didn't have a doubt in my mind i knew i was going to bring it in absolutely now i got to give some shirts out here guys so uh you know, you know, yeah i was going to say i got to have somebody hold the mic uh how about 54 here T tell us a little bit about your game and i'm going to hand out some shirts so we, my, <laughs> my game is just to do the best I can and just to dominate the line and just win and battle. And we got the job done today. Yeah. Manny Malkazini, you already know we got that win. You already know. I was out there as nose guard. We were doing really good. I'm so glad we won. I get to go home, drive home with a smile on my face. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, let's get it for our homecoming. Let's go. Uh, hey, passing it to Renzo Del Corso. Let's go. Hey, hey, you saw Serpentine. We're a united community. And this is how we stay locked in. Snohomish is it. This is where it's at. We, we're we all one big family. You can see it in the community. You see it in the stands. And you see it on the field. Hey, we never back down and we never what? Give up! That's what's up. All right, I got I got one more player of the game here, uh, and that would be Mr. 41, Cole Bedard. Uh, how about that? About that win? How about getting two rushing touchdowns, my man? Um, I mean, it feels really good because we haven't we've had a really rough season, but it feels really good to get that win. It was my first time ever carrying the ball in a, offensively, so. Whoa, 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 whoa! First time ever carrying the ball offensively was in this in this situation in this game. Well, I did it like once when I was nine, but that was it. And, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, it worked. Whatever you did, it worked, my friend. And you are a player of the game. Thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. It means a lot. Hey, Ab, Ab see, if you can get, see if you can get Joey right to your left there. Let me, let's see if we can get everybody in here looking right up there at the banner. And, and give me a go, Panthers, on three. One, two, three. Oh, All right, see if you can get Joey behind you. Hey, let's do that one more time. One, two, three. Go Panthers! Joey, Joey, you got any final thoughts on this win? Hey, what a, what a team team win tonight. That was a Snohomish community right there that got that done tonight. It wasn't it wasn't the 73 guys we had suited up. It was the 2200 that we had back in this house tonight. Excellent job. What you got for Monroe next week? Hallelujah. We got to go get back to work and enjoy this one tonight, and we'll go get ready for Monroe. Go Panthers. Go Panthers all day. Believe in it. Joey, enjoy this one and keep these kids safe, all right? Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah, the boys got to play it safe tonight. They got homecoming dance, so we got to be wise. So appreciate you guys. Thank you. And go Panthers. Go Panthers. Great. All right, back upstairs. I think that's going to do it from here. All right. Our, our players of the game presented, of course, by Adrenaline Fundraising uh, and our, uh, our defensive line, the entire defensive line, uh, getting that Les Schwab Tires lineman of the game shirts. Um,
You gonna wrap it up? Up I'll there, wrap Robbie? it up for you. Yeah, good job down there, Amp. I mean, you were fighting it out in the crowd down there. You found those kids really good, and you got the shirts out to them. So we got some good pictures on that. And we'll wrap it up here tonight for STSVN with the Snowish Panthers coming out with that 28-14 victory, a hard-fought battle to the end. And we'll be back next week at Monroe, and let's see what happens then. So for Todd Elvig, Sarah Elvig, Amp down there on the field fighting with a big crowd. Why, we'll. Uh, We'll be back to see you next week. This is Ron Henthorne saying goodbye and good night and happy Friday the 13th, everybody. This is Banks. Long Banks. He finds a oh. seam down the sideline. Skips past 10. Five. Touchdown. Second one wow. of the night. Strike right at keeper. Here's the rebound again. Another great save. Still in favor with two bang bang saves at point blank range.